today, Andy's releasing more of these. Andy's new monster gaming CPU isn't exclusive anymore. Nvidia is set to finalize the RTX 5090 and 5080 this month, and Intel's new desktop Core Ultra 7 beats AMD's 7950X. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, AMD's RX 7000 mobile discrete GPUs have really felt a bit lacking, especially when compared to their RX 6000 parts. Really, I just feel like it isn't complete. Well, great news because uh, almost a couple years later at this point, it looks like AMD is releasing some new mobile discrete GPUs. Well, at least one, the new RX 7800M. As you can see right here, this has originally been teased for a little while now by One X Player, specifically for their gaming handhelds, though obviously AMD will likely release these for notebooks as well. Either way, when it comes to specs, as you can see, the 7800M is expected to feature the Navi 32 GPU with 3840 stream processors, and instead of a 256-bit bus, it will have 192-bit and come with 12 gigabytes of memory, and it comes with a 180 watt TGP. Now, the main story here isn't that this GPU exists, but that in a new video from 1X Play, they actually share a benchmark in Time Spy. And as you can see, it scored 15,806, which is 28% faster than the 4070 laptop GPU. Basically, this isn't going to be breaking any records for a mobile GPU or anything like that, but it does fill in the gaps in AMD's RX 7000M lineup. Yeah, it's significantly slower, but then there's a 7900M, which is quite a bit faster. So this, like I said, just sort of seems to fill the gap between some of AMD's other mobile GPUs. It's just a shame that it took AMD so long to release it. And next up for today, if you saw my recent video, you know that we finally got some benchmarks for AMD's new Ryzen 5 7600X3D. And in that video, as I showed you, it is a champ. Here, it's actually shown beating the 14900K, though I do want to point out that the 14900K here does not have overclocked memory, while the 7600X3D does. Still, this is massively impressive, especially because we're talking about a CPU that's just $299. With all of that said, the one major contention about this is the fact that it's only sold at Micro Center, or it was. As you can see right here, AMD's 7600X3D is no longer exclusive to the US and therefore is no longer exclusive to Micro Center. Moving right down here, you can see that the 7600X3D processor for mid-range gaming PCs will not be exclusive to the US and Micro Center. As Andreas Schilling noticed, the CPU is now available in Germany as well, but just like in the US, the string is attached, it's only available at Mine Factory. Now, that may still seem like a massive caveat, but given the fact that this is not exclusive to Micro Center, yeah, it is sort of exclusive to Mine Factory, but it's still technically not exclusive just because we're still talking about two stores. So I'd argue that there is at least a chance, potentially a good chance, that AMD will eventually open this to stores all over the place. With that said, there is one chance reason why they won't. Simply put, the 7600X3D is likely made from a Ben 7900X3D, so it likely just depends on how many issues they had in production when making that chip to determine if they have enough chips to sell tons of 7600 X3Ds. Still, this is really good news because it does point to the fact that AMD may soon start selling this all over the place. And next up, also an update to my last video, to which if you're not watching those videos, what are you doing? If you love PC hardware and like to keep up with all the latest news on it, make sure you subscribe to Gamer Melt. Either way, if you did see that video, you know that the well-known leaker, Copite7Kimmy, ended up basically saying that the RTX 5090 comes with a 600 watt TDP while the 5080 is at 400 watts. Well, it looks like we have a new story that somewhat clarifies that and gives us a little bit of new information. As you can see right here, this one comes from the Chinese site Benchlife, where as they state, they're known for close contacts within the AIB industry, and according to them, they basically confirm 
that there is indeed work being done on a high wattage cooling module specifically rated for 600 watts. However, they clarified that the 600 watt figure refers to the maximum heat dissipation capacity, not the actual TGP, meaning that 600 watt figure comes from how much heat it can dissipate, not necessarily how much power it actually draws. And of course, the reason those can be different is just for anyone who may want to overclock or anything like that. With that said, while it isn't 600 watts, they are still quite power hungry. As you can see, according to this, the RTX 5090 is still expected to consume a whopping 550 watts, and the RTX 5080 is anticipated to be a 350 watt card. Now, while that isn't all that great, it's still very impressive, especially if the numbers that we saw in that last video about the 5080 being able to beat the 4090 by 10%, except this time, we're looking at it having a hundred watts less. So that is seriously impressive. Not only that, but as you can see right here, they also state, quote, Blackwell GPU architecture 5090 as well as 5090D and 5080D. Oh yeah, according to this, NVIDIA is working on a Chinese only 5090D and 5080D, and they're scheduled to finalize the design this month. And what's wild about this is that shortly after, we actually got this from an official discussion in the OC3D forum by EK, where they're kind of discussing about these rumors about EK being bankrupt or closing. They basically say, on the contrary, EK is not only continuing its operations, but it's also expected to accelerate the launch of our game-changing next product line. He goes on to say, we're developing new products and preparing to introduce unparalleled cooling solutions for the new GPU series announced for release later this year. Up until now, pretty much all rumors pointed to NVIDIA's next-gen GPUs releasing next year, but at least according to this, potentially they could actually be coming this year. Fingers crossed. And lastly for today, we have a huge story on Intel's next-gen Core Ultra 200 series. We're talking about desktop CPUs, specifically the Core Ultra 7 265K. The big news here is the fact that we have one of our first new benchmarks of the CPU. And as you can see, this is within CPU-Z, and I got a single-core score of 919.1 with a multi-core score of 16,274.6. Now, the reason this is such a big deal is because when we compare it to both Intel and AMD CPUs, we can see that this bad boy not only crushes the 9950X, not a giant difference, but still don't forget that we're talking the Core Ultra 7 versus AMD's newest Ryzen 9. Not only that, but when it actually comes to multi-threaded performance, the 265K actually beats AMD's Ryzen 9 7950X, and it gets fairly close to the 14900K and 9950X. Basically, Intel's next-gen CPUs are shaping up to be seriously impressive. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for Intel's next-gen CPUs, or are you more excited about next-gen GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.